Hi. Let's try to understand the relation between interest rates in the economy, the current market rates of interest, and how these interest rates in turn affect the bond prices and thereby bond yield. Bond yield. So this is something we are trying to understand. How the current market rates of interest would influence the prices of the bonds being traded in the market and in turn how does the change in interest rates would affect the change in the yield. But for those of you who is not clear with the term yield, let me make it clear with a very simple example. Let's say imagine there are two gentlemen A and B happen to spend a different amount of money. Imagine this fellow happened to spend 10 crore rupees of money or let's say he invested 10 crore and this gentleman invested 20 crore. And both of them happen to invest in similar kind of asset. In fact, similar type of asset. And this asset, what he purchased at 10 crore is paying him 1 crore per annum as a returns. So, he is making 1 crore rupees per annum out of 10 crore rupees of money invested. And in a similar kind of asset, let's imagine he happened to invest in a housing property. In the same locality, in the same vicinity, this man happened to purchase the adjacent villa at the price of 20 crore and he happened to rent it and he is making 1 crore out of the same asset, similar asset. So, in this case, who is said to be better off? Because both of them happen to purchase a similar kind of assets, but he spent 10 crores and he is making 1 crore on it. But whereas this gentleman happened to spend 20 crores on the similar kind of asset, but he is making hardly 1 crore out of it. So, in these two cases, who seems to be better off? I would say A happened to be better off. Because if I don't disclose the money they happen to spend on buying these assets, and I just give you the numbers, how much money they are making per annum. A is making 1 crore, B is making 1 crore, who among these two people are really better off and who happens to make a good investment choice, then most of you would be thinking there is hardly any difference. A and B makes the same amount of money. It is not the question of how much money you make at the end of the year matters. What really matters is how much money you invested to make that money. So look at this gentleman has invested 10 crores and it is making him 1 crore. But this gentleman has invested 20 crore and he is making hardly 1 crore. So, in fact, he is having a 10% returns on the capital invested and he is having hardly a 5% capital, I mean returns on the capital invested. So, henceforth, I would say this A has made a good investment choice than compared to B. So, I hope you understand the money or the capital invested, I am referring to this and the returns that he is making is 1 crore. So, now let me define what is the term yield. So, yield is simply the returns or your earnings by your investment. That's it. So, the yield in this case is 10% whereas in this case is a 5%. So, that's how you define a term called yield. But let's simply try to confine our discussion with respect to bond yield and bond prices. So, now the question is having understood what is a yield, let me define what is a bond. A bond is simply a borrowing instrument, a borrowing instrument. So, when someone makes, okay, borrows money, they happen to simply give you a written contract that I owe you some money and I would pay you back this particular amount of money, whichever is being played, okay, named on the piece of paper with a certain amount of, I mean, certain rate of interest. And this paper has a maturity period of 10 years. That's been the time period after which I'm going to repay you the money. That's it. So, that's the reason every bond is characterized by these three parameters. One is the face value of the bond. Let's suppose in this case, the face value of a bond is 10,000 and the annual rate of interest and that I is referring as I, that's a 10%. And since it's an interest rate is annual and imagine the bond seller also promised you the interest would be paid on an annual basis, not a semi-annual basis or a monthly basis, you get paid your interest on an annual basis. And the bond has a maturity period of 10 years. Let's suppose this is what Okay, is a paper someone happened to print and happened to approach you. And what is he asking you? My friend, if you are interested, you could buy this piece of paper of mine. And on this paper, I would make a commitment to pay you an annual rate of interest of 10%. And this is computed upon the face value of the bond. 
So does mean if you look at 10% of the face value of the bond, does mean the bond holder would get 1000 rupees of money in the form of interest. So his interest earnings would be 1000 rupees because it's 10% of the face value that comes to 1000. And what else is the promise? 10 years later, if you come back to me with the piece of paper, I would redeem this paper with 10,000. That's mean I'll take the paper, give you back 10,000. That's the deal. And I'm in need of money. Why don't you buy it? That's it. So that simply is a bond. Got it? Now, let's suppose if you are the person who has been offered the choice. What do you think would be the price you would like to pay for this piece of paper? What do you like? Okay, what do you think is the price that you would like to buy? Okay, or you would like to pay for this piece of paper? How do you figure it out? To understand that, what should be the actual price that it is worthy paying? Let me take a simple example. Let's look at the alternative. Here in this case, imagine you have been left with only two alternatives. Iske alawa, you don't have any other alternative form of investment. So you are left with only two different choices. One is you could buy my bond which pays you a 10% rate of interest. And when I say my bond, uh, let's simply take this as a bond that government is selling. And I would call this as a government bond. So you have some money, you are interested in investing money and the only two options you are left with, two different options that you are left with. One, you could deposit your money in SBI. The other way of deposit, okay, saving your money is by investing a government bond. And forget about investing in real estate, gold, bitcoins and all these things. Just suppose these are the only two alternatives you have been left with. And now SBA promises you 5% rate of interest. What is he saying? That the 10,000 rupees of money that you happen to park it with me, you get paid 5%. That comes around 500 rupees per annum. That's the offer SBA gives you. So for every 10,000 of deposit, you get 500 rupees. So if you look at the yield here in this case, okay, it's hardly 5%. But whereas the yield here in this case, if you buy the same paper at a, for the same price of 10,000, the yield is a 10%. Again, if you buy it at 10,000. Got it? So what seems to be an attractive investment choice? Let's say if you have some money and you're willing to invest, and these are two options that you have been given. So what would be your obvious choice? And I would say any racial person would go for this, buying a government bond. Because for the same 10,000 rupees, you have a better chance of making good amount of money. So it's not only you person who happens to be aware of this fact. Not many investors might be aware of the same information. And what do you think would be the obvious consequence is these investors now would be happy buying more government bonds. I mean, everyone would like to convert their savings into government bonds because this is paying them better returns than compared to the deposits in SPI. Isn't it? So when everyone is running after the same piece of paper, what do you think would be the demand for this bond? The demand for this bond, it increases. Because this seems to be an attractive investment choice, the demand for this bond increases. Henceforth, the price that people are willing to pay for this paper would be definitely in this case more than 10,000 because the alternative is giving you very less returns. Isn't it? So now let's suppose finally a person happened to quote me the highest price. Imagine someone said, I would like to pay you 15,000 and that's the best price that the market is willing to pay. I'm just giving some random number. But in this case, I don't really think it's worth paying more than 20,000. But let's say someone happened to promise 15,000. It does mean that, it does mean that though the bond has a face value of 10,000, but the price the market is willing to pay is 15,000. And I would generally okay, call this as the market price of the bond, the market price of the bond. And that's what I'm referring as a price of the bond. The price that people are willing to pay for this piece of paper. And in this case, it is a higher than the face value. So generally, if the bond is being traded at a price higher than the face value, we say the bond is being traded at a premium to face value. If it is being traded at a price less than the face value, we generally use the term that it is being traded at a discount to face value. So less than face value, we use a discount to face value. More than it, we use the term premium to face value. So now this gentleman thought it's a good deal and he spent 15,000 to buy the paper. Now to make things generic, I would replace SBA with the market, with the market. I mean, except government, the rest everyone, maybe the corporates, 
okay maybe the foreigners no matter so i'm just simply trying to replace sba with the market so now let's try to make it more generic and now imagine the next year it so happened the market rate of interest i mean in india has gone up to 20% has gone up to 20% i mean in the market people are willing to pay you 20% of annual interest for every penny you lend in such case what does this okay 20% does mean that people are willing to pay you 2000 rupees for every 10000 rupees you lend in this case but whereas your paper has a fixed rate of interest promise for the next 10 years it does mean no matter whatever the price you happen to pay but your paper earns only 10000 rupees only 10000 rupees in such case do you really think someone would be interested who ever has some amount of money would be interested in rebuying this piece of paper definitely not because there is no point in at least paying 10000 for this paper the reason is you end up paying 10000 for this paper it only is 1000 rupees because the government made a promise the bearer of this bond gets paid only 1000 rupees for the next 10 years and at the time of maturity you could convert it only for 10000 rupees but the same 10000 if you have in your pocket and just go place in the market go place in the market or simply lend it to any player in the market on an average they are willing to pay you a 20% a decent rate of interest which is 100% more than what this pay so in such case do you really think it makes sense buying at 15000 definitely no you know at least 10000 i don't really think so so now the price of the bond would be okay less than 10000 so in this case i could say the bond price has reduced or the market price of this bond has reduced why is it so no one is willing to buy the demand has come down when the demand happens to reduce obviously prices tend to fall that's a simple logic and that's the reason this gentleman whoever has purchased 15000 could no longer sell it at a price at least more than 10000 so he end up selling at a price less than 10000 in such case we say the bond is been traded at a discount to face value so that's what i would like to convey that you might have noticed the price of this bond the price of this bond what i call the simply the bond price is it a really a function of interest rates in the markets yes so just now we have noticed the fact when the interest rates in the markets is increasing the price of the existing bonds is reducing is a reducing then how would you compute the yield of the bond it simply the interest rate that you earn the interest rate that you earn divided by the price of the bond i mean the price okay you happen to spend on buying this bond price of the bond so you could notice the fact that yield and price are inversely related and now whenever the interest rate increases the price of the bonds in the market reduces because these investments okay these instruments would become very less attractive because compared to market they are paying you very less rate of interest hence forth people would not be interested in buying these piece of papers the reason they have a better alternative source in the markets and hence forth when interest rates in the market rises what happens to your bond prices reduces when the bond price reduces what happened to the yield i mean when the denominator value reduces because this interest rate promise is fixed that's 1000 in this case it is only this particular price of the bond that is variable in this 10 years so hence for your yield when this reduces the yield increases so that's hot it and the same thing happens when the interest rates imagine in the previous case when the interest rates in the market has come down to 1% when the interest rates in the market has come down to 1% that has been people are saying that if you are interested in lending money i would not like to pay not more than 1% but whereas look at that particular bond i have purchased is paying me a 10% annual rate of interest 10% annual rate of interest on a face value of 10000 that has been i am making 1000 rupees upon 10000 rupees for every year that has been my okay demand for my bond in that case increases when the market rates of interest fall the demand for my bond increases because now it becomes an attractive investment the reason my bond is paying you 10% and the market is willing to pay you not more than 1% so hence okay, this becomes an attractive investment that results in shooting up the demand for the bonds when the bond prices increases and what would be the impact on yield simple the interest divided by the bond price so since it is increasing what happens to your yield it reduces 
So by this, I hope you could understand that interest rates yields more or less going hand in hand and bond prices is inversely related to interest rates. Got it? So that's how the interest rates in the market, bond prices and yield are related. Now, before concluding it, let me ask a very simple question. If you are lending money to someone for short term, so someone happens to promise you, do lend me money and I would be obliged to repay back in a month. And there is someone who is simply saying, do lend me the money and I would be repaying the money after 10 years. So my question to you, which out of these two cases is more risky? Lending money for short term or lending money for long term? And we all accept the fact in the long term, interest rates might vary. So imagine both the parties are paying you some 5% rate of interest is what they promised. So one gentleman says, lend me money, I'll pay you back after one month at 5% rate of interest. And someone else is saying, lend me the same money, I'll pay you back with the same 5% rate of interest. And my question to you is, out of these two lending, I mean, out of these two loans, which is more risky from the perspective of a lender, I would say the long term loan is a risky. It's not that the person would run away with my money, it's because the 5% rate of interest as of now seems to be an attractive investment or attractive rate of interest. And in a span of one month, I don't really think the market rate of interest would really make a change. But that's not the case with the long term rate of interest. So 5% right now seems to be an attractive investment or attractive interest rate. But in next 10 years, you and me cannot predict the rates of interest. Isn't it? Henceforth, maybe the inflation rate might go high, that might reduce my real interest rates and henceforth, it is risky lending money in the long term and that's a very basic reason when it comes to long term loans, people expect more interest rates, more interest rates, people expect more interest rates. So by that, we could conclude the fact that when it comes to short term, the interest rates are, the interest rates are low interest rates are low whereas when it comes to long term the interest rates are high that's mean you make more money by lending money in long term because you get more rate of interest so by the same logic if i ask you tell me yield of these two so is the yield for a short term bond would be more or is on a long term bond would be more the yield of a long term bond or a short term bond would be higher. Since you get paid more when it comes to lending money for long term, so the yield on long term bonds would be relatively more than compared to the yield on a short term bonds. So if you draw the yield curve, if you draw the yield curve of these instruments, if I take this time, I mean to say the maturity period, let's say one year, two year, 5 year, 10 year, 20 years. Since people, and let's take the case of a yield on Y axis. Like I said, when it comes to long term lending, people expect more and more rate of interest being more risky. Henceforth, the yield on long term bonds would be higher compared to the short term bond. So typically, this is how the yield curve looks like. This is how the yield curve looks like. So when you lend money for long term or you buy a long term bond, the yield would be relatively higher than compared to the yield that you make or that your short term instrument gives you. The logical reason is there is more risk attached when it comes to lending money for long term. Henceforth, they promise you better rate of interest. Okay, that's it.